Hi guys, it's Stephanie, and now I'm going to read Revelation 3. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So just remember that. That's important. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiments, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to understand that one a little better. Um, okay, so if you read that first verse again, and it says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Meaning, you're claiming, I believe that's what it's meaning, you're claiming that you are a Christian, yet you do not actually have you have believed in vain. You are not believing. You are not actually believing. So you are just claiming something, but you are dead. You are not alive in Christ. I believe that's what this is talking about. And it's a warning that they need to be repent and turn towards God and actually be believing, right? And watch or else it's going to come on an hour that they don't expect. There are these churches have different kinds of people in them, right? And in each of them have, you know, just like any church now, which we can probably apply all of these things to every church or any church in the world today. There are many similarities described here as there are there. And um, so I think that's why this is important because we're supposed to know these things so that we don't get caught in those traps, you know, of being in a church that is dead or, that has no life and it says that there were a few names that ha had not defiled their garments meaning they were walking with him and they were in the truth right and they were found worthy why because Jesus Christ makes you worthy but if you don't actually have Jesus Christ then you're not worthy <laughs> and you won't be worthy and your clothes will not be made white before him so that's what it I'm getting from this. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So, um, in that one, again, that was at the end. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh. It keeps saying, he that overcometh. Well, we know in the Bible that it says that the one who overcomes is Jesus. The one who overcame it all is Jesus. The only way that we overcome, we are overcomers through Christ Jesus. So any of the places where it's saying he that overcometh to him that overcometh, it is because you have Jesus in you and you therefore overcome these things because Jesus has already overcome them. Right? So um, we... We rest in him knowing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we follow him and we keep on following him. And we keep on moving in the direction he calls us to go with his Holy Spirit. And we overcome 
through him, right? So um, it's not about you and how you um, overcome. It's about him that already overcame these things for us, but we have to believe it and we have to receive it, which this church, there were many in that church that said there was only a few that actually were believing the truth, right? The rest of them were probably just having a social club, <laughs> like the churches we see today. <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there so people can understand that people like to take that he that overcometh and I think they make it into something more for the rest of the tribulation. And I don't think that's what it's saying here. It's saying we put our faith and hope and trust in the one who already overcame. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> okay, so we're going on to verse seven. This is chapter three of Revelation. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Let me do that again. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Right. These things saith he that is holy. He that is true. He that hath the key of David. And he that openeth. And no man shutteth. And shutteth that no man openeth. And that's Jesus again. He's telling him these things to tell the churches. Right. I know thy works. Again, works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them, not us, them that dwell upon the earth. To try them that dwell upon the earth. It's not saying to try us that dwell upon the earth, <laughs> to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. That one was all positive. <laughs> I love that. That is the Church of Philadelphia, and that is the church that we want to be, right? Okay, so it is important to remember that it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. It is not saying that it will come upon my churches. And he's writing these to the churches. He said to the world. And it also says in his word that we are not of this world. We are a new creation, right? We are of his world. We are of his kingdom now. Okay. So. I need to figure out where I was. Okay. Verse 14. And, and okay, this is, this is sad. <laughs> Let's just be honest. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. This is from Jesus. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. I'd rather you be cold or hot rather than lukewarm, right? So, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Wow, that is intense. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. These are people who have not truly made a stand on the word of God, who've not 
determined this is the truth and I will walk in it. This is the kind of churches I see all day, every day on the news. <laughs> Welcoming anything and everything. Compromising the word of God. In fact, saying that the word of God is not the truth. We don't have to stand upon the whole word of God. These kinds of things. This is lukewarm church right here. So we're witnessing that right now. If you cannot stand on the word of God, then I question whether you have been saved at all. Because the word of God is true. It is everything. He is the word. Jesus is the word. What did it say there at the beginning? The beginning of the God, creation of God. These things saith the Amen. That's Jesus. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. Jesus. Jesus. Guys, it's Jesus. So, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see so it says I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. He's already paid the price. I believe that's what that's saying. And in order to receive these things from him, you must believe he is the one who did these things for you. As many and as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Turn around, turn towards him. That's what that's saying. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So he's outside the church in this one. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. He stands at the door knocking. And will anyone let him in? That's the, that's the sad truth about the churches I see around me today. Many of them do not even have Jesus in them. Not even close. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And that is the truth. So, um, I made some notes here. and I'm going to go over them real quick. Because then it goes on to something different. And I was just going to, um, sorry, I'm a little disorganized here. Mm. The seven churches. So here's what the promises were given to these different churches. So in chapter 2, verse 7, it says, we were given the tree of life. Verse 11, the crown of life and not hurt in the second death. Verse 17, hidden manna and a white stone with a new name. Verse 18, power over the nations, ruling with a rod of iron, morning star. Verse, or chapter 3, verse 5, clothed in white, name in the book of life, and confessed before the Father. Your name is confessed before the Father in the book of life. Verse 10, kept from the hour of temptation <laughs> that's a really big one that i'm like <laughs> all these are big but that one's really big <laughs> pillar in the temple of god then will he you he will write upon him a new name of my god and the name of the city of my god new jerusalem new name okay and then verse 21 sit with me on my throne sit down as he sat down we will no longer have to strive and work and and try so hard in in this life because we will be sitting with him in his throne so beautiful and it's so amazing and that is why we are blessed reading these things because it is our blessed hope and we need to hear these things we need to know that this is what we get to look forward to and we need to hear what the spirit says to the churches so this is important 
Anyway, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to pick up in Revelation 4 next. <laughs>